This podcast episode is supported through contributions from the McFadden family and the Jack Norris estate. Hi, welcome to Ray County Voices, a podcast about Ray County, Missouri, recorded primarily in Ray County, Missouri. I'm Sean Roney, your host. July is when the annual Ray County Fair takes place in Richmond. This year, the fair is set to start July 11th, a day after this episode of Ray County Voices goes live. But because of the coronavirus pandemic, this obviously isn't a typical Ray County Fair. To provide a sense of what the 2020 version will provide, I spoke with Emily Bergseeker. Bergseeker is involved with the fair through her work as 4-H specialist with the University of Missouri Extension for Ray and Lafayette counties. We met June 29th at the Thomas F. Eagleton Center in Richmond, where she discussed the fair and related topics. Talk about the fair. I mean, obviously, it's a smaller scale version of what it is because the Demolition Derby, for example, won't won't be there. Just um, was it easier to plan things this year because of that or? Um, As far as my side of the things with the 4-H events, it's still the same because they've kept all of the youth events. So um, for the 4-H side, which is what I deal with, the FFA, it is still the same. Um, Same livestock shows, small animals, all of that kind of stuff. Um, For the fair board, yes, it did take some um, duties off of the fair board, but those are also our major fundraising events. Um, So therefore, um, how that has affected the fair is there's no no premium um, being paid out to those youth that are exhibiting this year because we didn't have those events to help bring in income. About how many youth do you expect to participate in the fair and, and show either livestock or uh, plants? So um, we have a roughly about 150 youth in Ray County, um, but all of our animal projects are open to any 4-H or FFA member in the state of Missouri. So um, we don't have any pre-registration for that. They register on site at the event, and so we don't know how many youth are actually going to be there that day. Um, but roughly, I mean, we do have about throughout the whole week, probably that 150 at some point or another. They all don't do livestock and they all don't do indoor exhibits, but throughout there's probably 150 youth that participate. Do the youth who, who show livestock and come from outside of Ray County, are, do they tend to come from, from neighboring counties? Do you, do you get young folks from all over the state or? Um, I would say that most of them that come from out of county are the neighboring counties um, around us. Um, I wouldn't say they're coming from you know across the state or anything like that. I would say it's probably the counties that mostly border us or just a county over. Um, We get several from Polo or Clay County. We get some Platte, uh, Lafayette and that type of thing. So do you see any kind of drop off at all of, of attendance from from folks outside of Ray County because of COVID-19 or you think things have reopened enough to where the we have yet to see that really um, I think that people are worried about not having a fair so they might not have purchased um, their hogs or for example um, or they weren't for sure so they've turned their you know heifer out uh, with their other cows and that kind of stuff. Um, So I think that some of those numbers will drop, um, especially since some of the kids have not had project meetings to show or to attend because of COVID. I don't know that they have as many projects done or have been able to learn what they need to in order to show or feel comfortable with that. So I think we'll see a, a decline in that a little bit, but I honestly don't know for sure how that, you know, what our numbers will end up being. In, in what ways do you feel like a fair like this, whether it's the uh, scaled down version this year or the full version like we've had previous years, what is it? What do you feel like that youth get out of it that that helps them as 4-Hers and in in a lot of cases when they move on in, into agribusiness when they get older? 
Right. So, I mean, 4-H is an opportunity for youth to be able to exhibit their skills that they've learned, uh, practice public speaking, that sportsmanship, that type of thing. And so um, a fair, whether it's scaled down or our, like our full-blown fair, uh, really helps those kids be able to showcase what they have learned and those skills that they have gained. Um, and so um, it really doesn't matter full-flown or small. It just gives them that opportunity to share and talk to somebody about it um, and which helps them become a better individual long term. When I was growing up, I mean when it came to 4-H I tended to think of I think the the livestock and 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 the agricultural stuff but there are a lot of crafts and, and things that are done. Just, just talk a, about that. I mean does it kind of tend to get overlooked? And um, I think sometimes um, but 4-H has a hundred and five different projects that you can enter indoor exhibits in and have nothing to do with showing a live animal um, and so um, that gives kids an opportunity that don't live on a farm or can't have those animals or maybe can't afford it, an opportunity to still get some of those skill sets and be able to experience and be a 4-H'er with those indoor exhibits, you know, whether that's photography or foods or woodworking, um, you know, all those types of things. There's 105 of them out there for them to be involved in. Um, and I think that a lot of people, when they think of fair, just think of the livestock because that's a big portion of it, um, but that is an important part as well as those indoor exhibits. A youngster who plans to participate in this year's fair is Denton McBee, a member of the Millville 4-H Club. He'll be a fifth grader this fall at Elkhorn Elementary School in the Excelsior Springs School District. The same day I spoke with Emily Bergseeker, I spoke with Denton McBee at Eagleton Center. Here's what he had to say. So what are you, uh, what are you presenting in, in the fair? this year? Like ambassador or what? Well, uh, like doing, do you mean? Yeah, yeah, what are you doing for the, the fair that's coming up in July? I'm going to be an, an ambassador. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also, do you want to know like the projects? Yes. I'm going to be in gardening, woodworking, going to do a ham, uh, archery, arts and craft. Well, that's all I can think of, or I think I know. Well, that's a, that's a lot of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Is it difficult to make time to be able to do all that stuff? Mm, sometimes, but we try to do it like in two or three weeks of the time. Oh, yeah, and also uh, sport fishing. And sport fishing. So how, how are you going to do sport fishing at, at the fair, or is that... Uh, there was, I think there's only one or two other people who signed up and my dad was the leader but uh it was supposed to be like ritual something like that so he uh we never he never actually got around to it because of uh corona, the coronavirus but i have a friend and he's going to teach me how to make some lures uh top water lure we we're going to remake one and then uh I think it's road runners we're going to make out of a uh, scratch. Or I say scratch, but like we have like the hook and then all that. So we have to do a lot of stuff. And then also, a, uh, I think we're going to do a spinner bait, but have all that stuff. You mentioned something about, is it is it Basinger, I think it is? Yes. Uh, Tell, tell me what that is. What's that involved? I was kind of wanting to do it because I kind of want to learn about swine a little bit more since I've kind of wanted to do swine. But my cousin, he does sheep, and I would like to uh, kind of watch him more often so I get to uh, be an ambassador for that stuff. And then also uh, to just learn about the different types of uh, things 4-H can do. Hmm because I get a watch and hand out awards. You were talking about making fishing lures and things like that. So are you are you presenting any, you're presenting these projects yes. during the fair or, or what? Uh, so I'm not going to do nothing or anything for archery since I've done a couple things and I can't think of anything. But uh, you can make stuff. So like uh, for sport fishing, 
it's going to be all set up here, and you can build different things for that project. So like woodworking, uh, uh, last year I built a cutting board. Uh, uh, and what are you building this year? Now I want to blink one. I'm going to build a uh, shelf for I can put my uh, ribbons on. But then I also do archery and go around places to compete, so I can put some trophies on top of that. Besides the lures and the bookshelf, what else are you building for the, the fair? I'm going to do arts and craft, and we were going, or I was going to do where you get a picture frame, and then you have to have this certain type of paint, then catch it on fire, and then you can hang it up on the wall, and it looks uh, all kind of pretty. But then we've seen that you can do it with wood uh, and put gunpowder on. And it was a uh, Saturday night. I went up to my papa's house since he had powder. We tried uh, the black powder or black powder. And then we tried the reloading powder or gunpowder. And the black powder it, uh, or black gunpowder. It uh, flashed and had a real big, uh, like, smoke, and then hardly burnt in. It was more just dark. Then we tried the reloading gunpowder, and that burnt in slowly and uh, caught fire easier. So we're going to do that, and we have some stencils. I'm not for sure what I'm going to do, uh, but they said to put, like, in a ketchup or uh, mustard container, so we bought one of those. Uh, to put the gunpowder in and then put it on then we can take the stencil off and then catch on fire so I know we have arrows I'm not for sure if I'm going to do that my parents bought me a buck and then also a, uh, some trees like pine trees now you mentioned gardening or do you have do you have any any plants that that you're gonna show at the fair or uh, Yes, I'm going to probably take zucchini. Zucchini? Uh, yeah, they're still kind of slow on it, but it should be ready and for fair. I also have my own bed of strawberries. I have, and I've been picking some. I'm going to uh, take there. If uh, uh, the asparagus is still uh, okay, probably try to take some, maybe that, but uh, maybe tomatoes. We also have onions and the, uh, like, the onion what's underground, that part is humongous right now. So, go and take that too. The tomatoes, are they, they cherry tomatoes, better boy tomatoes, big boy, or do you know what, what we variety? We have, uh, a, a, a cherry tomatoes, can't remember what it's called, but it's supposed to have, like, vines with all these cherry tomatoes, I guess the vines are supposed to be like 25 to 30 inches long. Uh, then we have some different types of uh, tomato plants. I don't know what they're called other than one more, and it's uh, the Whopper tomato. I think that's how they say. It's supposed to be like 5 to 6 inches wide. I anything that you're hoping to, to, to learn from attending the fair? or? Uh, yeah, kind of just like learn about the fair more uh, because I don't, I mean, I've been in it for, I think this is, this is my third year for being more active in it, but I kind of wanted to experience the fair more, so that's why I kind of want to be an ambassador to learn more, more about the fair. Volunteers are key to making the fair happen each year. Since the mid-1970s, Marjorie Jenkins has regularly volunteered at the event and has been a 4-H volunteer. On July 1st, Jenkins and I spoke by phone. She discussed her involvement with the fair, 4-H, and receiving the Frank Graham 4-H Center for Youth Development Award, an achievement that is mentioned in a special fair supplement of the Richmond News, which co-produces this podcast. So, you've been involved with 4-H for 45 years, is that right? That's right. And, and how did you get started? Uh, well, our kids uh, got old enough to be in 4-H, and uh, they started.
start in 4-H and then uh, the one that was the community leader, she quit. So I took over and I've been there ever since. Now, are you involved with a specific club or are you... Yes, it's Dale Patton Club. And where's that based? Well, uh, right now we have it out to the fairground uh, at that little shed out there that the fair board uses. Speaking used of... to have it at... Um, well, we had a Dale Patton old school and we had it there until the bees got so bad in it and we quit having it there and they moved it up to... Um, Oh, I can't think what. It's a college they moved it to, up to Liberty. William Jewell? Yes. They tore it down piece by piece and moved it up there. And then we had 4-H at Mary Martin's, and uh, then uh, she got cancer and was bad, so we decided to have it... Uh, change it and we have it out to the fairground now. Speaking of the fairgrounds, how long have you been volunteering with, with the county fair? Probably, probably about, I don't know, my husband and I uh, was on the fair board for, uh, well, for a long time. We was on the, joined the fair and we both helped, and uh, I don't know, probably about 40-some years. So almost as long as you've been involved in, in 4-H, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time, but now uh, I did my kids, my grandkids, and I'm working on my great-grandkids now. How old are your great-grandkids? Well, they're just starting in. They're uh, five Six years, seven year olds. So they're just starting in. Talk about what kinds of activities you'll volunteer with at this year's fair, which of course is a scaled down version of the typical fair because of COVID 19. Yeah. Well, the only thing I'm going to help with this year is when we judge in the building, the uh, craft stuff and uh, gardening and stuff like that. My daughter judges the uh, ve uh, vegetables and I help arrange them and help put the ribbons on. And what's your daughter's name? Sherry Bersano. Is which 4-H uh, which club is, is, she, is she involved with? She's involved in, a, in a mine. What other what other areas have have you volunteered with at the fair over the years? Oh well, uh, rabbits mm. is about it. And uh, we when we were on the fair, uh, we I could helped in the cook shack, and uh, Kenny he helped on the grounds uh, helping with the pins and help them park cars and and that's about all we did there and, and our and kids showed well they first started showing sheep Kenny and I met showing sheep at uh, Kirksville Fair and uh, got married and then uh, our kids when they came along and got old enough we had started them on showing sheep and we showed sheep for a long time and then uh, then they had cattle and they had both and uh, we decided we need to just go to one so then they went to cattle but uh, I've got one son that is an ag teacher and uh, at Multiman and his kids both showed sheep and uh, He's got a, uh, his daughter is going uh, to work at, oh, I can't think what school it was. She got hired as ag teacher, and uh, 
his boy uh, works uh, in Texas on a big sheep ranch, and they've been showing everywhere. So the sheep, it's kind of stayed in our family. <laughs> then I've got two more boys, and one's a welder, one's a big truck driver. So <laughs> they've they've kind of spread their their occupations around. Sounds yeah. Like. One lives uh, in Marshall, and Sherry lives uh, right out of Richmond, uh, west of Richmond, uh, and uh, Tony lives at Warrensburg, and Tim lives at Springfield. So they're just strung everywhere. <laughs> Do you have a, a ballpark idea, Marjorie, how long you you plan to keep volunteering with, with 4-H and, and the Ray County Fair, or are you just kind of plan it day by day? Well, my daughter asked me, Mom, when are you going to quit? And I said, I don't know, probably when I die. <laughs> I love kids, and uh, I just love trying to get them into 4-H and, and it's a good thing. Uh, I wish more parents would take the time to go with their kids to 4-H, you know, and and not just drop them off. Go with them. Stay with them. I've always done that. Um, there's so many parents anymore don't want to take the time. And, you know, they work. They're tired. And... 4-H meetings is only once a month, you know, and kids get a lot out of 4-H. Like what? Well, they learn how, well, they have shooting sports. They learn how to show, uh, you know, animals. They learn how to make crafts. They, they make woodwork. They have cooking, sewing, about anything, photography, about anything they want to do, they can you know, always find a leader for them, and they have gate, uh, cake making and uh, uh, dogs, cats, rabbits, just about anything, you know, a kid wants to do, and, and like I said, it's only once a month, but there's so many parents that just won't do it, you know, it... Uh, I've always went with my kids. I've always stayed with my kids, and I'm I'm still doing it. You know, even grandkids. But. Just talk about um, receiving the uh, the Frank Graham 4-H Volunteer Leadership Award and and what that means to you. Well, it's a pretty high award, and I I was thankful that they nominated me to get it, and uh, yeah. You have to be in forage quite a while, and uh, it was just a nice award to get. Another volunteer whose service has spanned more than 40 years is our final guest, Charles Calvert. Calvert and his immediate family are this year's Ray County Farm Family of the Year, as determined by the Ray County Fair Association. He's the subject of a feature story by Richmond News and Excelsior Springs Standard Editor-in-Chief Jack Miles Ventimiglia in the Richmond News' Ray County Fair Supplement section. But many Ray Countyans also know the farmer and father of three as the owner of Calvert's Tire and Body Shop. That's where he was when I talked to him July 3rd, just as he was closing for the Independence Day weekend. We discussed several topics, including the fate of the demolition derby. A long time part of the fair, the Derby was pulled from this year's program because of coronavirus-related concerns. Calvert graciously answered my questions, even as the phone rang, as you'll soon hear. When did you find out that the Fair Association had named your family Farm Family of the Year? About a couple of weeks ago. So I'm guessing it's kind of settled in what it means and everything? Yeah. Still a big honor? Oh, yeah. And you've you farmed all your life, you said? Yep. Is it soybeans and corn? And cattle. And cattle. Mm -hmm. How many acres do you have? Oh, we row crop about seven or 800, and then we have three or 400 acres of pasture. And when you say row crop, you talk about rotation? Beans and corn. Talk about your involvement with the fair over the years. How did you get started? My dad. 
my dad was big in the affair and it just kind of trickled down to me and and uh, now my boys are both interested in it too you know they they uh, work the fair all the time what is it b- besides your, your your sons that that keeps you involved in it why do you feel like it's worthwhile well it's just good for the county you know you got your kids that's out there showing calves and it gives them a way to make extra money you know just to get going to college and some of them you know they save their money and go to college like that and it's just you know it's just good for the county to have some place to go with the the fair being stripped down this year being a little bit smaller because you're not going to have the demolition derby and the rabbit show and things like that how how are you involved in it this year what kinds of things are you going to be doing oh I've kind of stepped down a little bit, you know. I used to take care of the demolition derby all the time, and now I I just kind of help with everything, you know. I just I don't do nearly as much as I used to because I'm getting older, and uh, but you know if they need help, I'm I'm always available. I just help a little bit with everything. So you'll be kind of the utility guy this year. Yeah, yeah. Thoughts about there not being a de- demolition derby this year? It's it's hard on us financially. That's the problem. You know, that demolition derby for the last 40 years has carried the whole fair, you know, more or less. You know, it's been the big money maker and has just, you know, without it, it's that's the reason why we're struggling so hard right now. You know, it's just hard to make any money off of, you know, hardly anything else. There's just no big money makers anymore. And I'm guessing it's too early to tell if you'll be able to bring it back next year, huh? Well, it's too early yet for to know about next year, but they're still they're talking about having one in September. And if everything stays the same, we may be able to have a late one, and hopefully we can recoup some of our losses. And when you say stay the same, you're talking about the COVID-19 situation? Yeah. What, what advice would you give for, for someone who's saying wanting to get involved with the, the Ray County Fair? Why, why would you recommend it being a, a good thing for them to do? It's just a good group of people that, you know, that work out there. Uh, it's, it's hard work. It's hard to, uh, you know, I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done, mowing and weed eating and things like that. But, you know, you kind of see... When you go out there and you see those kids that's getting their hams judged and getting their chickens looked at and judged, it's just uh, it's just kind of fulfills you, you know. It's uh, it's just it just makes you happy to see all them kids that's you know getting to do something like that where they wouldn't get to, you know, if they didn't live around here. Before closing, here are a few updates since our June episode, titled All or Mostly About Richmond. The Keep It Richmond campaign that was covered in our last episode is underway. A banner promoting the campaign is on display on Main Street. In addition, many locally owned businesses are displaying Keep It Richmond promotional stickers in their shop windows. Speaking of local businesses, we received a request from Mickey Connell. Connell follows the Richmond News, which co-produces this podcast series, on the newspaper's Facebook page. In late June, Connell asked that Richmond-based businesses be listed, writing, I live in Ray County, but rarely go to Richmond, as I haven't a clue what restaurants and shopping are there, other than Walmart. Well, Mickey, a small list of Richmond businesses is included in the description of the June episode at buzzsprout.com and on other podcast platforms. And as promised, I'll cite them here. If you're in Richmond and you want to support Richmond merchants, Crooked River Meats Market and Grill, JP's Total Image, Daddy's 1013 Diner, and the Nest Egg are a few to consider. And in other local business news, some Richmond businesses and organizations participated in the It's All for One Summer Food Drive to help feed local youngsters. From late June through July 6, they set up collection boxes at their locations where they accepted non-perishable items. Participants included the Richmond Chiropractic Center, North Star Wellness, the City of Richmond, and Missouri Farm and Home Mutual Insurance. Thanks to everyone who participated. Finally, you might have noticed Ray County Voices has a new logo. 
Karen Payne with Richmond News is responsible for that clean striking design. Thanks, Karen, for a job well done. That's it for this episode of Ray County Voices. Once again, I'm your host, Sean Roney. As was mentioned to open the episode, this podcast is supported by contributions from the McFadden family and the Jack Norris estate. If you want to be a sponsoring business or a supporting patron of this podcast series, contact Sharon Donat, media specialist with Richmond News and Town & Country Leader, at Sharon at LeaderPress.com. That's Sharon at LeaderPress.com. She also can be reached at the Richmond News at 816-776-5454. That's 816-776-5454. Our contact information also is included in the description of this episode at buzzsprout.com and on other podcast platforms. Speaking of which, thanks to Buzzsprout, the online host for this podcast. And most importantly, thank you for listening. Check back again in August when our scheduled theme for the month will be nonprofit organizations. Until then, take care and stay safe. Ray County Voices is produced by the Richmond News in association with MoMA Multimedia, an imprint of Mutt Media LLC. It is directed and engineered by Sean Roney. Music for Ray County Voices is composed by Sean Roney and performed by the music collective Sacred and Secular. The copyright for this podcast is owned by the Richmond News and MoMut Multimedia. Any use of this podcast without the express written consent of the Richmond News and MoMut Multimedia is prohibited.